What is up, everybody? Have you ever wondered how to take your dream of a barn dominium from a dream to a reality? Well, today we're going to walk you through the process of going from a napkin sketch into real 3D models and really experiencing what your floor plan might look like. And so we're going to take that and show you how to do that and the software that I use when we designed our barn dominium. And hopefully by the end of this video, you feel inspired to go and just jump right in and, and don't be afraid to get started. Uh, and start to design your dream bar dominium. And then we'll talk about how you can take that design concept uh, from a great 3D model to a architectural plan and then find a builder to help bring your dreams to reality. So if you're interested, uh, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe down below. And we're gonna go ahead and get started, show you the software and walk you through from start to finish how to design your custom dream bar dominium. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's jump right into it. Uh, we'll be using a software called Home By Me, uh, which is a free online software for doing uh, 3D modeling of your home project. And so we'll just jump right in and create a project and I'll walk you through all the steps to get started and uh, hopefully encourage you to, to try this out. So uh, it's gonna give you a video and all these kinds of things. You can skip through those, uh, give it a name. I'm gonna call it Dream Barndo. Uh, it's a new construction house. We don't have an existing plan. And then you have two options, either room by room or draw walls. I prefer draw walls because I'm more of an engineering type. Um, I think it's honestly, it's easier and you get a lot more control. This room by room is weird. You get like rectangles and you're trying to attach them all together. It's, it's odd. So we'll use draw walls. Uh, and then you're presented with just a big blank canvas. And so the way I like to get started is just kind of draw a very rough sketch. And we're going to be basing this on the house that we built. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and draw a rough outline. And you can see as you use this, it kind of gives you some measurements. Um, and then it gives you kind of a nice snap. So it tries to make everything rectangular for you. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of outline the sh rough shape of my house. And you can see it also kind of snaps here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and let it snap for that, even though the wall is gonna continue. Um, come over here and close the house. And now I've got one big shape. I'm gonna click validate. And so that kind of gives you like the rough shape of, of your foundation. And so now, you can get in here and start to do very detailed uh, measurements. And so I just use my mouse wheel to scroll in and out and then I click on it to drag around. But then I can start to, to modify these walls and it gives you two different measurements. It gives you the outside dimension and the inside dimension. In this case, they're both the same because the walls are uh, a corner wall here, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this wall to uh, 100 feet. And when you do this, it's very important to remember which one of these to click. Uh, if you click apply left, it's going to move your left wall. If you click apply right, it's going to move your right wall. So in this case, I'll go ahead and click apply left. And so what that did is it moved this wall out um, to make this total length 100 feet. Now I'll come up here and I'm going to um, uh, make this wall at uh, 20 feet on the exterior, so 20 feet. And again, I want to apply above because I want to move this wall out, not this wall. And so now I've got that wall. This wall I know is 40 feet. Again, I'm going to put 40 feet out here, 40 feet. And again, I want to apply right so that I move the right wall and not this wall because I've already got these two in the right position. So apply right. That's something you're going to have to kind of pay attention to as you use this tool. So make sure you click apply left or right correctly. Otherwise, it's going to move the wrong walls and, and sometimes it's hard to, to recover. Uh, the other thing is to make sure you're paying attention to exterior versus interior measurements. Um, by default, I think all these measurements are going to look at your interior measurements, um, but then, and so if you click on that and you're like, oh, that's supposed to be 40, well, not really. So you gotta click out here and then make sure you measure the right one. Anyway, so let's move on. Uh, this wall is 60 exterior, 60 feet, and then we wanna apply below. And then this wall is actually 140 feet total. Oh, look at that, it, uh, it lined up because I measure this, I measure this, I move the walls correctly. And so this wall is now the right size. And then this wall should be uh, 40 feet. Yep, it's 40 feet, right? So now I've, I've got the rough foundation uh, shape. I don't have the patios and the porches on here yet, but we can do that later. And so now you've got basically a big foundation plan. And if you were to look at this in 3D, uh, you can kind of zoom out and you can see I've got basically a big walled structure. Um, you can walk outside, you can see I've just got basically a box. Not very impressive yet, um, but this is where we can start to really make a lot of progress pretty quickly. Um, and it's just about as fast as drawing on a napkin. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add walls. 
And you can see it gives you nice measurement tools as you go to add walls. And I'm going to go ahead and add this right around 40 feet because I know that's the size of that great room. Um, I'm going to add another wall here to divide the garage from the main living area. I'm going to throw a hallway right down the middle. And again, you don't have to get precise measurements here. You're just trying to get a rough shape for, for your house. And then you can come in and do the more detailed measurements later. Uh, I know I've got a, a bathroom here, maybe about six feet. Cut that in half for a closet. Then got a room here. I've got a bathroom here and bathrooms are about six feet. And I've cut this in half. I got two rooms here. And then I know I've got um, a room and a bedroom over here and a bathroom. So the bathroom's kind of like that. And this room's kind of like that. Or something like that. And then this will eventually become a laundry room and we'll delete that wall. But for now, that's the rough shape. Uh, we've got a master bedroom here, give or take. Uh, and then we've got a closet here, give or take, and then we've got a bathroom here. And so that's kind of a, the rough shape of the house. And, and we'll go in here and add more walls and, and cut some stuff up. It kind of gives you a rough shape. Click validate and it just makes sure that you don't have anything that's kind of totally broken. Delete the walls that don't need to be there. And so now I've got the rough shape. I've got the great room, I've got the hallway, I've got the laundry room, I've got some of this walkways, um, I've got the bedrooms all set up, I've got the bathroom, closet, etc., and, and then the garage. And so you've got kind of the, the rough outline of your house. And again, if you jump to 3D, now you've got all your walls are there. It's great, right? You've kind of got the rough shape of your house uh, ready to go. So uh, it kind of gives you a lot fairly, fairly quickly without having to do a whole lot of work. So then uh, you can go in and add things like doors. So this is one thing that Home By Me does really well is they've got a lot of, of different doors and windows and, and furniture and de decorations and things. So you can really make your house feel like a real place. Um, and to get a, a sense for how much furniture is going to fit in the rooms, you need to change the dimensions of certain rooms to make sure that you get things. Because sometimes putting on a, a piece of paper, it's really kind of hard to imagine. Like, well, what, what would a queen size bed look like? Well, what about a sofa? What about this dining room table I want? And, and how, what about chairs? And so you can really use Home By Me to do a lot of that stuff and, and really go wild. And I'll show you what my final Home By Me uh, ended up looking like. Uh, and it's, it's really quite detailed. Um, certainly, it's still not an architectural plan, but it really gives you a sense for what you're kind of going to be building. And then you can transition that into architectural plans and then later into a final build. So anyway, let's go ahead and go into build. Let's pick a front door. And again, they've got a lot to choose from. They are, I think, a Canadian company. So you're going to see much more European styles in here than, than you would uh, kind of more American styles, but that's okay. Um, find something that you think is representative of, of what you'd like. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it gives you a sense for kind of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to choose something that's similar to our front door. They don't have a whole lot of options. Um, maybe I'll just choose this one. This one's kind of cool. Add the project. When you add it, it puts on your cursor. So now you can see it's kind of moving around. And as you move it to the walls, it kind of snaps. And you can, kind of, again, zoom in. And depending upon which side of the wall your cursor's on, it tells it which way the door's going to open. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick it uh, here. Our door actually opens in. And then you can edit it and say, actually, I don't want the door to be 2 foot 11. I want it to be a 3 foot 6 inch door. And I want it to be uh, 8 foot tall. And it will actually make those modifications. So it knows how to kind of scale and stretch these doors, which is really kind of cool because it allows you to get the right dimensions with, and then still get the right look uh, on, on the, the door. So you can kind of get that that cool aesthetic. Uh, and then as you start to add more details, uh, it really starts to look pretty nice. All right, so uh, then I'll add a bunch of the interior doors. I'm gonna just kind of go through this really, really quickly. Um, so you guys don't have to watch me place interior doors for a long time, but I'm gonna go interior folding doors. And then we're just gonna find a nice kind of standard shaker style door. And they've got quite a few to choose from. They've got lighted panels. They've got the traditional panel doors. Uh, I think I'm just gonna grab this guy, which is, Again, actually this one, this is probably closer to what we have, but again, not the same. So I'm going to grab that here. And here uh, is an important step. If you want to have doors that are a certain size, maybe you want to have all three foot doors and they're all eight foot tall, whatever it is, go ahead and set that on your first door because then you're going to just duplicate from there versus having to come in here and edit everything. But make sure you get something that's kind of the right size and shape. Um, and I think ours are like seven foot six inches. I don't remember exactly. Something like that. Go ahead and do that so that as you duplicate this door and then you drag it to the next bedroom, you've got the right size door all throughout because modifying these doors later is, is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, just something to, to remember as you go ahead and add all these doors to your to your build. And again, if you have different size doors for different rooms, you can go in there and you know 
change those and, and do whatever you need to do, but um, this kind of gives you a, something really, really quick that uh, gives you a lot of coverage. Right. Bathroom door in there, et cetera, et cetera. So you kind of, you get the point, right? I've got most of my doors. Let's grab this guy. Pantry door up there. Uh, and what you'll see is some of the doors are, sh are facing the wrong direction. And so you come in here, click edit, uh, and you've got these wall opening buttons. And you can see as I click that, it toggles back and forth. And so we'll pretty quickly be able to kind of get that into the right size and shape. And then the other thing is, because you have these good, good dimension tools, you can say I want them all four inches from the wall. Um, you'll have to do that for every single door, but at least you can do it and you can kind of make them all consistent. I'm not going to go through all that detail, but that's kind of how you would do that. And then, yeah, so now we've got doors in. Let's add one more for the garage. You can see some of this stuff kind of gets in your way sometimes. You gotta click out and then click and drag. It's you know, not, not a perfect tool, but it's free and it allows you to get a lot fairly quickly. All right, I've got those. And so now uh, what we wanna do is, again, we look at 3D and we can see that we've kind of got this big box got this big box, but it's just a big box, right? That doesn't really look like a house. And so what we want to do is we want to do a couple things. We want to add a second story that's basically our roof line. Uh, and then we want to uh, make some of the exterior uh, design. And so what we're going to do is right now we're on the ground floor. And so, and I know that our ground floor our ceiling height is actually nine foot. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to nine foot and I'm gonna add a floor, and then they call that first floor. And it's not actually first floor, but it's the, the roof. And so we'll say, okay, I want that to be eight foot 12 inches at the top. Uh, maybe it's a little higher at the peak, so you might have to do a little bit of math to figure out what your roof pitch is and what your actual height of, of that roof is supposed to be. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave it at, at this, this number. And so now if we go back to 3D, what we can see is we have effectively a two-story house, right? You've got this first floor down here, second floor up here, but that's not what we want. We don't want a two-floor, two-story house. I want a one-story house. Um, and so you know, what happened is, again, if I come here to ground floor, here's your ground floor. I go to first floor. It duplicates all of your walls. I don't know why they do that, but that's how they do it. And so now you need to come in here and just, you know, click through all these walls and delete them because, of course, you don't have all these walls in your attic. Um, you just wanted those exterior walls. And this is where things get tricky, right? If you start moving exterior walls after you add the second floor, well, now you've got to modify both floors together. Otherwise, things get a little bit weird. Um, again, this is a free tool. It's not perfect, um, but that's kind of something for you to remember as, as, you, as you work through this. And so I'm going to go ahead and select this wall and then click Edit. So again, I'm on the first floor, not on the ground floor. I'm on the first floor. Click Edit. And to make a roof, you do sloped wall. Super weird, confusing, I get it, but that's how you do it. Um, and then you say the depth, which is the distance from here to here, the depth I know is 20 feet, because that's a 40 foot room, so half of 40 is 20. Uh, and then uh, you want it to be the room height, which is what sets the, the peak of the roof. Do the same thing over here. Um, this is where you actually you see like, this is not, I don't want this whole segment of the wall. I actually want to split this wall so that it only goes to here. Uh, and doing some of these gable roofs in this software is a little bit tricky, um, but it's something that you'll just have to work through. And so you see it split it, it splits it right in the middle. It's not really what I want. I want to split it so that that's, this is uh, on the first 100 feet. So I need to move this thing way over here. Uh, and it gets a little bit difficult. Let's see. Split. There we go. might have to, yeah, I think I actually have to put this wall back in. Uh, this is, again, where like using these software things is not quite perfect, but you'll eventually get the hang of it. All right, now I've got this segment, click edit, make it a slope wall, and I want it, again, at the room height, depth is 20, so it did all that stuff correctly. Then. So I'll see if I actually got the roof I was looking for. Yeah, so pretty close, right? So I've got a roof. Um, looks like my gable height is not quite correct, but I've got a roof. Now you can see it sloped. I come in here back to 2D, and I change uh, this floor height. Uh, actually, up here, ground floor. Let's actually go to 3D and see if we can do it from here. So I come in here and change this to like nine foot. Click OK. 
see it makes that rip a little higher. Uh, let's go nine foot six inches. As you can see, you're kind of changing the, the slope and pitch of the roof. So something you can kind of mess around with and figure out what, what your roof pitch is and how high it needs to be. Um, nine foot 11 inches, maybe a little more steep. Um, and you can see right where this first floor and the second floor is and then what the height is off the off the um, wall. And so that's the other thing. If you go back into uh, 2D, sorry. You can see when I click on this and edit, it says height. So height is where does the slope start? And so in this case, we want our slope to start about one foot off the, the floor because that's kind of your rafter, rafter depth. Um, and we do that again, same thing over here, one foot. And then we go back to 3D. You can see now the roof pitch should be substantially steeper because we've, we've started it kind of at the base rather than having it three or four feet off. So you can kind of use that as a tool for how much like attic space and rafter space you need. Uh, you don't have to necessarily get that detailed in, in a design software like this. Uh, your architect can do that, but it kind of gives you the right pitch on, on your roof. And then we can do the same thing over here uh, on this side of the house. So let's zoom back out. And then we'll edit this and we'll say we want to slope room one foot off, depth 20 because it's 40 feet wide. Same thing over here. And this is where things get a little bit tricky is that, see, they're trying to do the gables, which they're, they're doing kind of correctly here, um, but they, they miss this whole part of the of the roof. And you're like, why is that? And some of, the, some of these measurements just get a little bit weird with how they do it. Um, and it's kind of tricky to get all these things to, to perfectly line up. And so sometimes you have to be messing with this a little bit of like, 19 foot 6 inches, 19 foot 5 inches, right, and I think eventually, maybe, no, it's not going to do it, see, it's like, it's a little unhappy uh, with, with this particular wall, and so, it, anyway, you can, you can kind of mess with it, it'll eventually get there, um, you kind of sometimes have to just mess with the walls. If I wanted, if I did on this wall, it will create like a tri-gable, um, which is not really what you want. Right, you can see it's kind of like trying to do this wrap around, and maybe that's the roof saw you want. Maybe you want your barn builder to do something like that, but um, you can kind of mess with it. This is where I found like it's not a perfect software, right? It's not a, a full architecture software, and so you'll you'll struggle with those things a little bit. Um, but if you're okay, kind of just working through that, you can you can usually get it to, to do what you want to do. Um, so we're going to go back to 20 foot here, and then this guy, edit, and you can't really, it's like this, is like, uh, you can't do a slope roof here, right? So um, you kind of you kind of get close, and then it's not quite perfect, but it gets you pretty, pretty close. And now that, let's just say that that's the roof style I wanted, which is not very traditional for a Barnabinium. I think it's possible that probably your builders would be like, oh, you want to do what with your Barnabinium? Um, but yeah, you can kind of do something like that. So anyway. That's kind of now I've got the basic shape of of the the place, so that's great. And let's go back to 2D. So the other thing we saw I did, and we can kind of jump back to the first floor, is uh, this room is actually a, a vaulted cathedral ceiling, while the rest of these are not. And so what I want to do is take this wall. I know that this is 40 feet. It should be about 40 feet. Um, actually, I haven't, I haven't edited these rooms. So let's go ahead and move this wall. So let's make this guy exactly 40 feet. And again, you want to apply right to move this wall, apply right. And you see it kind of juts it out, right? This is where you know, doing some of your basic planning is important because then you're doing all these micro adjustments later, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, so now I've got this room all set. This should also be 40, yeah, perfect. Um, and again, interior versus exterior, you should think about those things if you want to get super detailed. But just for the point of this, I'm not going to do all that. Uh, and then I'm going to jump up to my first floor, aka my roof, I'm going to add a wall here as well. Uh, and so we're going to put this in, validate, and we're going to make this at 40 feet as well, apply right. And so here what you want to do is you actually want to make this open to below. Uh, so this is a floor opening, which I think if I did this correctly, I'll go over here and let's jump down to the ground floor. Right, you can see what it did in here, hopefully. Right, so now I've got a vaulted ceiling in this room because I said that the floor was open to below. And so that's how you do some of these more like advanced things in these rooms. 
Um, but that's kind of um, something that you can decide how detailed you want to get on this stuff. But I, I think that it really brings this to life and makes it feel much more realistic as you do as you do those things. Um, all right, so then I've got the floor selected. Let's go ahead and click Edit. And here you can do things like flooring. Uh, and so I can choose the material I want. Um, and so they've got all these hardwoods, they've got tiles and vinyl and all this stuff. And so you can just find like all kinds of cool flooring. I think this is the one I used when I did my rendering. Um, it starts to feel pretty real pretty fast, right? I've got white walls, I've got a black door, I've got this nice uh, kind of vinyl. And then you can go into this like house tour mode where you're like pretending to walk around and you kind of just walk around your home. Uh, so it's pretty neat. It starts to come together really fast. You can just click to walk around, walk down the hallway and get a really good feel for like what is it going to feel like as I go through, go through the house. All right, and you can see I only put the flooring in that one room. You'd have to go through each of the rooms individually, edit, choose your flooring, et cetera. Um, I'm not gonna go through all that detail right now. All right, so we've got a basic plan. We've got the roof line set. We've got the garage all set. Um, and you can start to modify all your interior room shapes. Um, the next thing I wanna do is add all of the windows because I think they really start to make the, the build feel uh, a lot better. And so we're gonna add windows. And I'm just gonna use simple windows uh, and the nice thing, again, about Home By Me is they've got a, a lot to choose from, but, but they're often not perfect. Um, so I'm just going to choose this uh, minimal sash window, add the project, and we're going to throw it in here. And this is very similar to the windows we bought. They're kind of a casement style window where they've got the little crank and they open out. Um, and again, we can jump into house tour mode. Or actually, let's go 3D. 3D is a little easier to navigate sometimes. You can see, okay, there's my window. Well, that's not really the size of my windows. And again, you can come in here and you can edit it and say, all of my windows are three foot and then they're five foot, six inches tall. Uh, and then height from floor, again, really important. So ours are all two foot, six inches. And this is something really important when you set this up. Uh, again, you want to create that first window with all the right dimensions so that when you go to duplicate it, you've got the right dimensions and you're not messing with, with that every single time. So now I've got these two windows, pretty similar to what my bedroom looks like. Um, the only other thing that we need to do is flip that around. So again, you can decide how, how, how detailed you want to get in this stuff. I like to be a little bit more detailed. Uh, and then we're going to duplicate those. We've got a couple in this bedroom, duplicate that one. Actually, let's use this guy, duplicate this one. You can see sometimes these things get a little bit tedious moving stuff because now I've got these windows overlapping, but anyway, I moved the wrong one, of course. But you get the point, right? You can kind of mess around with these things you can, and they snap pretty well so you can kind of get all the things you need where you need them. Of course this thing keeps doing what, exactly what I don't want it to do. Alright, got that. I've got a bunch of these windows and other bedrooms as well. Again you can start to really see how, how quickly you can get this thing designed. Um, and just really have a have a conversation on like you know what are you trying to do um, with your build and and start to get a really good feel for how it's going to kind of come together. Uh, I would recommend though before you put all these windows in that you actually make sure that you've got the room sizes because moving all this stuff after you got every, everything kind of set is is harder and harder. And so yeah, I would recommend that you kind of get your room size correct uh, before you do all this. I'm, jumping through that because we're just trying to move really, really quick. Um, and then I've got a bunch more windows in here. Duplicate. Come on, open out. Duplicate. Again, it's not perfect, but it gives you a pretty good sense. And then you get to jump into 3D and it's like, hey, that kind of looks like the house is coming together and you can kind of zoom out take some screenshots, really get a feel for what it's going to look like. Um, so it's really, really fast how, how this comes together. And then you step outside and you see like, hey, that's what my outside of my house is going to look like. Pretty neat, right? Um, and then the other thing you could do is start to edit the, the textures outside as well. So let's jump up to the first floor. Let's select this roof. And I know I've got a black roof. And so they don't give you a whole lot of options here, but like I just did this black roof. Um, they also have some of these other things. I think they've got like concrete metal. So you can kind of say like, oh, I want this like galvanized metal looking thing. You see the textures aren't perfect, um, but it kind of gives you something to work with. Um, I think I ended up just doing like, you know, matte paint black. 
um, and said like, yep, that's my roof, good enough, right? I just did that over here too. Edit. Uh, actually, I think you can do reuse. If I did this correctly, reuse and then paint. Makes it go a little bit faster. Paint, paint, all right. Now I've got my roof all black, my outside's white. It's starting to look a little bit like a house, right? Like it's not, it's not perfect, but it's starting to look a little bit like a house. All right, let's go back into 2D. Let's jump back to ground floor. All right, so we've got our rooms laid out. We've got some of that stuff. So let's start adding some furniture. And again, they've got quite a few things to choose from, which is one of the, the draws. And you saw how, like, how quickly we put that together. Uh, and it's starting to feel pretty real pretty fast. And, and then you've got a lot of you know, cool furniture to choose from. Again, is it going to be exactly what you had in mind? No. But you know, can you find a nice leather sectional? Yeah. Can you kind of make the room look sort of, sort of like what you want? Hopefully, right? And so we're going to add this sectional. Um, and maybe I do that and then I add another one. Um, because I know mine's a little bit bigger. Let's add that as well. All right, so that's kind of like what my sofa looks like. Not exactly, but it's close, right? Um, and so it gives you a sense for kind of what it's going to look like in real life. Um, and then you get to like complex things like kitchen cabinets. And so what I did for that is, is again, you can go into uh, this build. Go back to build. And now we want to look for, um, no, it's under decorate. No, decorates decorations. Where's kitchen cabinets? Build. Uh, cabinet. I got like decent little search. You can see there's all kinds of like really cool stuff in here. Um, so rooms, kitchens all kinds of fun stuff you get like pre-built prefab stuff so you can go like the simple route where they do have and they have like full like full sectionals you can find one that like is close and they can just add this whole thing to your project um, which is kind of cool and then again you can change like the hood and the styles and everything so you can really start to make it look kind of like what you want uh, I'm actually going to delete that and we're going to do it uh, kind of more from scratch if I can find the cabinets like they move some of this stuff around. Where did they put this construction? You got all these shapes too. You end up I end up using some of these shapes as well, like steel beams and other things so that you can kind of have fun with some of this this stuff as well. There you go, kitchen, it's under furnish. Um, and so they've got all these different like plain cabinets basically that you can start to use, which is what I did a lot of. And so you can find like doors and drawers and wall cabinets and all these things. And so, uh, and again, they're kind of like very European style. So you're not gonna find exactly what you're looking for probably. We wanted something that was kind of like this with drawers, but we wanted three. And so I think the closest one we can find was this one. And so I just added that to the project. So now you've got this thing and I can jump into 3D. You see, it's just really kind of a basic cabinet. You can move it around in 3D as well. You can rotate it, you can snap, and then you can say, okay, I want that there. Duplicate, they duplicate to the right. So you're like, okay, well, let's go over here and stick it here. And then let's duplicate a bunch of times, right? And you start to get cabinets. And again, you can figure out exactly what you want to do. We're just going to put in a couple of these. We're going to take this guy, delete them, delete that. And then move this guy over maybe. Delete it and duplicate. And you can go in and get a range. So let's go in here and furnish again. And let's look for a range. You can see they've got a bunch of like pretty nice ranges, right? Like, okay, this is pretty close. I want a six burner range. Let's stick it in there. Yeah, fits pretty well, right? So it starts to come together. Let's add uh, some more things like a refrigerator. Full. They've got some like nice wolf looking things, some Samsung looking things. Maybe you want something kind of like that. Let's add this guy to the project. And again, you can like do things like stainless steel and all these kinds of things. So like you can even make it look like wood if you wanted to. But um, 
come in and do a metal and do like a stainless steel. Okay, we'll re-render that and then you can then change the handles. Maybe you want black handles. We'll just say matte black handles. Right, so it really starts to kind of be that personal touch that you're looking for. Change the color of the walls, the flooring, you can add lighting, um, all kinds of stuff. Put in furniture, there's a couch we put in. Um, and then we can put in a bunch of doors. So let's actually add that giant door that we have here. Uh, it's under build and then it will go. And this is where you have to get sometimes a little creative. Like they've got patio doors, but like, do they have a 30 foot slider? I mean, not really. Um, but they've got this one that's kind of close, right? Um, and so you can choose how you want to do this. I can't remember exactly how I, how I did this, but I think I ended up putting the same door in a bunch of times. Um, so let's actually grab, oh, this one's kind of close. Let's add this to the project. So get over here, edit. Let's just say we want it to be 30 feet long. It's definitely in the wrong spot. But we can now drag it to the right spot. And again, you know, okay, 30 feet long, it should be about five foot-ish from each wall, four foot four, five foot, whatever it is, you know, four foot eight inches. Now it's in there. Uh, what size? I know that door for us is like nine feet tall, so let's put nine foot. And then let's jump back in here and see what they did. All right, so they just made four big panels. Again, you can put it in twice. You can might even be some of these have like other uh, things where you can like put in like number of panels and things but it starts to give you a feel for, for the room um, you can kind of stand inside of it and now you're like hey I've got a I've got a room and again add more of your furniture add your windows etc really comes together pretty quickly so in whatever it's been 20 minutes uh, 30 minutes that we've been working on this we've gone from completely nothing to something that's fully rendered in 3d you didn't have to have any special software really uh, you can do it all on your computer. You can share it with your friends. You know, uh, you can really go through this pretty quickly. You can move walls and, and really just start to to get a feel for like what can you do um, with your space. Um, you can do fun things in here. Like this room is still like one floor, but again, you can open the ceiling. You could put this whole loft in there, um, all with just you know creating walls and segments, opening up the space, and then they've got all kinds of tools for like exterior decorations as well. So if I wanted to um, do like exteriors, they've got you know, driveways and patios and gardens, and then you've got um, let's sort of decorate maybe. Right? They've got paint and tiles and flooring and lighting and plants and flowers and trees, and so you can really like really go go quite uh, quite crazy with this. Um, and you can see like lots of cool decorations, um, and it's all relatively easy, like drag and drop kind of things. Uh, and then you, what, what you might need to do is if you get into situations where you really just can't get the thing you want. So for example, um, when we did our build, the, the counter, the kitchen counter uh, was really a countertop that you, they don't have. It's a big kind of angled thing. And so I ended up just like adding rectangles and kind of making them um, the right size. And so you edit it and you can kind of set like the height and the thickness and all these kinds of things. And actually, maybe it's not right to shape, sorry. But uh, where is it? It's under here. It's under like build. Technical equipment, construction, right? You can see you got all these shapes. And so you can just like grab a shape and then resize it to whatever shape you need it to be. Um, you've got prisms, they've got beams, they've got all these things. And so you can kind of shape those as well. Um, into, like, let's just say you wanted a big cil uh, cylinder at the project. Let's see, you have some sort of kitchen table or something, right? You can edit this and you can change the style and say, like, you want a marble, um, something like that, or a brick centerpiece, right? Go back into block. And I've got this little brick centerpiece thing, right? Um, and so you can kind of do a lot with shapes as well if, you, if you're not finding exactly the, the thing that you need from, from Home by Me. Then when you're all done, they give you some tools to give you like realistic images. Uh, I think you could do like one or two of these without paying or three, right? Um, but they give you a pretty nice like render. You can see, like, let's just do this realistic image. Get started, right? You can see it like puts a, an exterior out there. You can have some like flexibility over what you do there. Um, that really starts to give you like a nice high resolution, like highly detailed render. Um, of, of your space and you can choose like what you want the 
aesthetic to be and right, all these kinds of things around like, are you in a city? Is it nighttime? Right, et cetera. Um, so you can kind of really get like a, a really good feel for your space. So anyway, play around with it. But the, the point of this is that like, don't be afraid. Just go ahead and jump in there with a tool like this, draw your rooms out. And now you can get a feel for like, what size do you need? What are you gonna use the space for? You can do two or three or four plans and, and really start to kind of think about like, well, what's this one gonna cost me? Um, and you can really start to figure out like, oh, can I fit that tub in here or not? Maybe I need to move this room around. And so we use this a lot to really just plan those things out. Uh, and then once you feel like you're really good with that, then you can go to an architect and a designer to get them to fine tune it because they're very expensive, right? They're gonna charge you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars an hour to, to kind of do this kind of work. And so you wanna go in with a pretty clear idea of what you want um, before you, you start spending money on, on those types of things. So um, let me show you uh, our kind of final home by me. And then, uh, so you can get a sense for like what, what's possible here. And then, uh, yeah, well, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the, in the comments down below and I'll try to help you guys think through this. And if you want, I, I've got plans available on Etsy. I'll put the link down in the description below. You can purchase those. Some of them are you know, exactly what you're seeing here. They're just design concepts. Um, I do have some that are a little bit more architectural, but um, you can purchase those if you want to get more inspiration. And if you want help, let me know and, and we can send you some resources. So uh, let me jump over to that uh, other um, fully completed design. All right, so this is uh, my version that we, we did. It took me you know, probably several weeks to put this together, um, but this is what you can do with, with Home By Me. And so um, you can see I've got garage doors, I've got all my windows, I've got some grass in a driveway, I even got some patio furniture out here. Um, I, got my, I don't have my gable in here, right? So that was one of those things where you're just like, man, that's too complicated to, to try to build a gable in this software. I probably could have figured it out, but didn't do it. Um, but you can see like barbecue islands and wine fridges and furniture and you can see that I've got this sliding door and you can see it is actually two four panel doors. Um, but you can kind of just walk through this whole thing and get a good sense for um, what's going on. So we're going to jump in here to this, this room and look around a little bit. Um, you can see again I've got this table uh, that is pretty similar to what we ended up putting in here. Um, and we got you know our dream fireplace and all these things. Some of these things we didn't actually end up building. Uh, we wanted to, but we never did. Um, but uh, we've got some other videos coming on on the eventual fireplace build. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can kind of really get a feel for for the space. Um, and you can see, like we did the kitchen island and all the chairs, our black cabinets with the brass handles, our fridge, um, this custom vent hood, our backsplashes of shelves. Right, a lot of the things that we had in mind uh, are all designed in here. Um, our pantry, the corner pantry is there. Kind of walk through here. Let's see, right? All the pantry shelving that we had in mind, um, pretty similar. You know, we didn't do all of this stuff, but but we get, did get quite a lot of this stuff the way that we we had in mind. You can see, like, obviously this is not where we finish because this is like way too crowded. But this gave us the inspiration to figure out like how did we want to lay some of this stuff out? Um, fridge, sink, all that stuff in here. Um, and again, we can walk through all the rooms, kind of go in and see, like we've got all the rooms kind of furnished so we could really get a good sense for like, what could we fit in a space like this, right? This is like a king size bed. Um, this is actually not the way that the, we ended up moving the shower to this side, the door to that side, but um, this gave us a lot of uh, ways to think about those things, right? Like, oh, I, I want a window in my shower, so I should put it over here and I should move the door. And, but what does that mean if I put the door over here, then I have to, you know, where does the furniture go? And, and you can kind of think through a lot of those things um, by, by going through this process. And again, it's, it's free. All you need is your time. Uh, and you can really look, I mean, it looks really nice in my opinion. Um, you've got furniture, you've got doors, windows that are beautiful. Um, and so you've got things like the vanity and mirrors and tubs and you know, showers and all this kind of stuff. And my little toilet, my pony wall and my closet, right? It really kind of comes together in a way that you can really get a good sense for How's everything going to look? You've got your laundry room and your stacked washer dryers and your mud room and all these things that um, really kind of help you get a sense uh, for what the space is going to look like. We've got our loft up there of the storage and stairs, which are no longer stairs. They're all a lift. But, um, you know, if we hadn't gone through this process, we might not have, have realized those things until after we built. And then, and then what do you do, right? You're like, oh, I wish I would have done something differently. Uh, this lets you really get a good feel for 
how the how the space is going to feel and what you're going to do and um, so yeah I really encourage you to, to try this out um, it's free uh, it's easy and yeah it really sets you in the right direction it's fun right? if, if nothing else it's fun so uh, enjoy the process uh, reach out if you have any questions and uh, I wish you all all the luck uh, uh, you're gonna need it uh, if you're gonna try to build a barn name so uh, anyway if you like the content hit subscribe hit the like button down below and I'll catch you on the next video thanks